Welcome to Love All Yourself. I'm Shira. Hello, I'm Karista, and thanks for joining us today. And welcome. Welcome. <laughs> okay. So I want to start by doing an exercise because okay. we're struggling a bit today. Uh, yesterday, we were struggling a little bit when it comes to our creative side, right? So I'm just going to close my eyes and I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to take at least one deep breath in through the nose. And I'm going to go against my own rules here. And I want you to actually hold it for at least five seconds. So and then exhale after five counts. All right, we're going to go again deep through the nose, but now I want you to hold it for 10 seconds. Ten, then exhale. And then one more time, deep through the nose, hold it for 15 seconds. And then make sure to exhale nice and deep and exhale all the breath you can. Okay. And then what I would like you to do is I want you to think of the first three words that come to your brain and say them out loud. Life, love, and sunshine. That's funny. I heard happy, joy, and sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> so what does that say to us? What does that say to us when we take a minute to just kind of breathe and like be calm and still and the first thoughts that pop in our head are things that are positive when mm -hmm. we've had potentially negative experiences or we've had unfortunate low energy or right right you've come across an unfortunate situation or whatever what does that say to me the first thing that I'm thinking of you know if we're just going to go right off the top and still play with this exercise right the first thought that comes to my head is your soul wants you to experience something blissful mm -hmm. your higher self wants you to be in a better state of mind Mm -hmm. right a higher state yeah a higher state of mind right um some people refer to that as like what high vibrational states or you know connecting with source or connecting with your guides or connecting with your higher self um and i think that this particular exercise for me is my attempt to connect with my higher self and by doing this this is also what i use to be more creative um, when I'm finding myself a bit stuck, I heard, um, this one, uh, person I follow on YouTube, uh, her name's Christine, Christina, I'll have to go look it up. I'll link her below. Um, and she's brilliant and she calls her higher self soul self. So when she's calling to her higher self or talking to her higher self, she says, Hey, soul self. And so I've completely adapted that recently mm -hmm. because I actually really liked it, you mm -hmm. know, cause you know us humans in our words. And so, so I've actually like actually adapted this. And so I'll say something like, all right, hey, soul self. And usually every time I do this, it's because I'm in like a rut, right? Or like I'm feeling like retracted into my little turtle shell, or maybe I'm just so exhausted. I just can't think anymore. Or even overwhelmed. Or overwhelmed, right? Experiencing like anxiety or whatever. Um, and so normally the very first time I do the whole call out, sometimes I say it out loud, don't care who's listening. And I'll just be like, hey, soul self, I really need, could use some help right now with solving this issue or, you know, coming up with a creative idea or, you know, what should I be focused on? All the questions we ask ourselves over and over mm -hmm. again, you know? And the first thing I always hear is take deep breaths in, right? And it's like, ah. Oh calm the nervous system of the body that I'm sitting inside of, right? Mm -hmm. um, okay, cool. Which is why I said, let's try doing the three breaths. Um, and there's health benefits to that, which you've, you know, talked about on previous episodes with us. And 
you're actually really good at the whole breath thing. So that's nice. <laughs> I got to get better at that and drinking water. Um, but I use this all the time. And when I can, when I do the, the three breaths, uh, and sometimes I'm stubborn and I won't do the three breaths and I'll just be like, no, I just want the answer, you know, cause me and my control issues with uh, getting a quick response. And so, but if I do do the deep, the three deep breaths and I sit back and then I just trust the thought process of what's the first thing that comes to me. Mm-hmm. And I just trust that that's for, that's from my higher self. That's for me to know at that exact time and moment. Right. It's just a fun exercise that I like to do. I think that there's a lot of untapped potential within breath work. Um, There's a lot of beautiful aspects to it and how it assists in not only calming that nervous system, but allowing us to rebalance and recenter ourselves and exit from thought processes that keep us out of this present moment. And so it's a really beautiful exercise to incorporate, you know, um, daily or as needed uh, when we are experiencing tense emotions, tense situations, tense physical feelings Yeah, um, to help us reground ourselves in this present moment. And uh, thank you for leading us through that exercise. Yeah, of course. So when we were sitting here thinking about like, okay, you know, we try not to be repetitive in our content. Although I think that sometimes it's good to hear things a different way at a different time. Mm -hmm. And plus you never know who's listening at whatever time they're listening to it. And so we were just sitting here and we're just like, man, you know, like we've got all these different topics that we want to cover and talk about. And, you know, we do the things, you know, full authenticity here, but we, you know, we'll do the things where we actually like We'll come up with a plan and we'll document that. We're like, oh my God, that's going to be great. You know, and a lot of these ideas happen while we're like in the middle of our work day. Don't tell on <laughs> us anybody. And like, you know, and, I'll, and you'll just jot that down really fast. Right. Um, and sometimes these ideas that pop in happen when you least expect it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually told my son this two days ago. Now that I'm thinking about it, I actually said to him, you know, I wrote down this incredibly cool idea that you and, you and I discussed yesterday. Um, and I think it's brilliant, but it was weird how it just popped in in the middle of me doing something completely unrelated. And I just heard as loud as possible in my own head, write it down. And so I grabbed, luckily I was around one, a pen and paper, and I just wrote it all out. And as I was writing out, it was almost like this information, you know, which people call downloads sometimes, we're just like dropping in like left and right. Like, yeah, and do this and do this and do this. And I was like, what the heck is going on? But I'm, I'm flowing, you know, I'm, I'm jiving with it. But then I told him uh, when I was sharing what I had came up with, with him, I had said to him, I wish that I would have written down half the things that had come to me in these random nuggets of information in my younger days, right? Mm-hmm. Like, all the things that just kind of just popped in my head and I never even realized was like, had so much potential to it. Um, Mm -hmm. And I would just get these ideas and be like, oh, that was great. Okay, where am I going to meet my friends for drinks later? You know, I do stuff Mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Probably did that for a pretty long period of time. And I'm like, damn it, wish I would have wrote that down, you know? (laughs) (laughs) And of course, now we have like phones where it's got a notepad on it and you just got to, all you got to do is type in there, right? Or record, use your voice recorder on your phone, record yourself a message and poof, there it is. Anyway. (laughs) Technology. Whoop, there it is. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. So, you know, part of our goal with doing this exercise was to really, you know, we were feeling tense and kind of just going back and forth, uh, sharing some, you know, things that are going on in our lives. And so this, this exercise is really, I, I feel more calm now, um, than I did when we initially started talking today. And I, I think that, this practice is super important to be able to find that calm space so that we can address those bigger uh, issues that may 
needs some additional attention um, or conversations with other people. So, you know, we, we've we talked about in the past also um, being open to like having uh, loving conversations. And sometimes when we are stuck in this state of stress and frustration, it's really hard for us to shift back into that state of love and acceptance and just uh, compassion, being open to hearing what the other person is experiencing without taking it personally. Um, so I think that this, this will be helpful uh, in practice excuse me, practicing this prior to those conversations. So I, I encourage you to utilize this as a modality. That's true. That's very true. How often are we quick to just like respond? React. Um, react, <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Better word. Thank you. So, I mean, but like how quick are we to just kind of like have an emotional reaction to something that's said to us? We don't take the time to just sit back and think about it um, mm -hmm. or even think it. about the different perspectives um, of the other person giving us that information and what they're experiencing. Right. Which, of course, always leads to the thought process of, you know, a lot of times in this community um, or anyone going through any kind of personal growth whatsoever has probably heard the term zero point frequency or, you know, going to a neutral place. Right. Or transmuting. Or negative energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that 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 alone has a lot to, you know, say when it's hard to get there. And like not a lot of people talk about how freaking difficult it is to take all the programming that you've had from your entire life experience, any mm -hmm. traumas you've experienced, any doubt you've ever had even within yourself, you know, being scared to do things and, you know, being told that you have to do it like this, that or the other, right? Mm -hmm. Like I mean Think about that. You want to try to deprogram all of that in one podcast, you know? <laughs> <laughs> one split second. <laughs> <laughs> one moment of breath work. <laughs> right. One moment of breath work. It doesn't work like that, you know? I mean, we came here to have this experience. We're having this experience. We should give ourselves some freaking credit that we've even made it as far as we have, you know? And, you know, like when you were first learning how to write, Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's took time. It took practice, uh, how to make the curvature of the letters to represent, um, what you're trying to say and how they connect together to make a full word and then connecting those words together to make a full sentence. And then you got conjugation and all these other things. And, <laughs> you know, it, it, where the comma goes, <laughs> dang it, grammar, so <laughs> um, it, it, this is similar in the respect that it takes practice to learn how to navigate and uh, integrate this type of breath work, this type of practice of shifting perspectives and being the watcher of not only your own reactions, your own, even if it's internal um, reactions and responses, how it feels to receive from other people. Um, it, 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 it helps us to see other people's perspectives too. So not just watching your own reactions, but other people's as well. Like being open to seeing that other people are stuck in patterns as well and uh, places of fear and pain, either physical or emotional. And so this is simply to help assist us in learning how to be more compassionate how with ourselves and others, um, how to uh, refocus so that we are setting ourselves up to have uh, an experience that is meant for our soul's growth as well. I was just thinking of the word compassion and how compassion, having compassion towards someone else when you start to practice your own self-awareness and what you're going through and being compassionate to yourself, you start to look at other people's um, perspectives and being compassionate towards what they may also be experiencing on as to why or how they are acting at that moment, right? Because you don't know. You don't always know what everyone's going through. Mm -hmm. um, I had this experience driving home uh, from picking up food and it was like, 
I was frustrated. I was tired. I'd been working all day. And uh, so my ability of being compassionate was down kind of low at that point. And I remember uh, this car in front of me was uh, the first at the stoplight and I was behind him second. And the light turned green and all the cars in the left lane were turning and going, but we were still there. And I was about to honk my horn and then they moved. But when they started pulling up, they were driving really, really slow, right? And so I got really frustrated because I was like, well, not only did you make me wait, but you're a slow driver. Like, oh my God, you know? And then I remember the very next stoplight, I ended up being side by side. And I looked into the window and I saw that this uh, lady was looking kind of down into the side out of her window. But the look on her face, you could just tell she was so sad. Mm. And she was so, like, she just seemed so sad. And I had this moment of like, oh my gosh, like I was sitting there being so frustrated with her. And yeah, it's good to be a courteous driver, but still like I had this moment of compassion for her. Like I've been there, you know? I've been mm-hmm. exactly where you are. And the last thing you need is some obnoxious driver freaking honking at you, rushing you, right? Like that was that was a moment for me that was huge because I've in my past, I might not have been the nicest person on the road, right? So like always in a hurry of wherever I needed to go. So anyway, I just thought that like sometimes when you shift, you know, your perspective, oh, funny, we have an episode about that. Um, <laughs> so sometimes when you do that, it helps you with that, with being compassionate, right? Like mm-hmm. it helps you be in a different state of mind. Anyway, thought I'd share that story. <laughs> your your story made me think of um, John and you know my husband of uh, sharing a thought about um, drivers that are aggressive mm-hmm. and that maybe they just have to take a shit really bad. The people that <laughs> cut you off, they're just trying to get to the toilet. <laughs> they're about to shit their pants. So being like, <laughs> go right ahead. I don't need that space. It's, go for it. <laughs> Were we all four in the car? It was my, me, John, Stephen, and you. So yeah. my, my husband, Stephen. And, <laughs> and, and he kept saying that in the back seat. Like, if I would get a little frustrated because I was driving, yeah. and he would say, like, well, maybe they oh, just have to take he's a shit. He's got to take shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that driver must need to, need to go to the bathroom real bad. And I was like, oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. Dang it. You like, and, and it's a funny way to like immediately shift you into like, okay, give that person <laughs> grace. I know how that feels. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, what does it mean to be compassionate? Mm. So, Compassionate has a sense to me of, like, if I think about this, it has a sense to me of feeling, uh, I, I want to say feeling, but I'm also like, hey, watch that emotion, you know, like try not to take on the emotions of somebody else because it doesn't really do anybody else good, but still being able to uh, relate in some way, um, in some capacity to understand where they're coming from in a more sensitive way, right? Yeah, yeah. I I think compassion requires an ability to be able to see an event or a situation uh, from somebody else's shoes, Mm -hmm. not necessarily attached to the emotions so that you're experiencing those emotions, but just being open to seeing what it might, what that experience might feel like. You're going to have to bear with me. My dog okay. has decided to go on a barking fest because someone rang the doorbell. <laughs> <laughs> Home <Pam>. life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, little Webster. Oh, He's little Webster. Protective. He's going to freaking town back there. <laughs> the perspective, shift the perspective. His perspective is that he's protecting his family. <laughs> no, his perspective is somebody's on the other side of that door that's willing to play with me and give me a oh. treat. And all I want to do is make a new friend. And I'm so excited. I can't oh, keep my mouth shut. Because <laughs> <laughs> there is no protection happening when that door does open, may I add. It's just oh, like 24 pounds me. of them. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> see, I, I feel like he's actually responding to me. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness. Uh, 
So. This is a great, great <laughs> exercise. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right. Give me one second. One second. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's all good. <laughs> it's called life, right? We're living it. <laughs> Recording from home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we're just trying to figure out how to live our best life and how we can focus on the joy that is present rather than focusing on the frustrations or the disconnect because we have so much amazingness around us. We have so much love. We have so much life. There is so much to be joyful for. So encouraging all of you listeners, take some time to just breathe today. All it takes is 30 seconds, maybe a minute. Doesn't matter if you're on the toilet or <laughs> in your meditation space or in the car. Well, don't close your eyes and breathe in the Please car. Please don't close your eyes in the car. But you can absolutely <laughs> breathe deep in the car. <laughs> Blinking's allowed, but long periods of rest are not. <laughs> while not while you're driving. <laughs> and maybe while you're driving, just uh, and you get cut off, think that that person may just have to take a really bad shit. And we hope that that brings you joy and laughter all in itself. And we can start to chuckle about the the things that we may not have chuckled about before. So I hope you guys enjoy your day. Remember to breathe, practice compassion for yourself and for others. And don't forget to love first, <laughs> love last, and love always. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Hey, listener, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us in this moment. We hope you enjoyed today's episode and we look forward to our next connection. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow to stay notified of new content from Love Always Self. If you have any questions or topics you'd like for us to discuss, please hit us up on any of our social media platforms linked in the show notes below. I'm Karista. And I'm Shira. And until next time, remember to love first, love last, and love, love always. always. Love Always Self Podcast is meant for entertainment purposes only. We do not make any warranties about the completeness, reliability, and accuracy of the information presented in this podcast. Any action you choose to take upon the information in this podcast is strictly done so at your own risk, and we will not be held liable for any losses and damages in connection with the use of our podcast. Any and all medical concerns should be addressed with a licensed healthcare provider, as well as any questions that may be derived from the information discussed in this podcast.